Welcome to a super exciting video about coin lockers in Japan. I'll go through some situations where coin lockers are useful, where to find them. I'll show you the different locker sizes, what you can fit in them with prices, and then a walkthrough of how to use them. Both the lockers that take IC cards like Suica and older lockers that take coins. There's lots more practical tips for your Japan trip in my 300 page guidebook. You can get it from cakeswithaces.co.uk with worldwide shipping. There are lots of reasons why you might use coin lockers in Japan. If you've been shopping and don't want to carry your bags around with you, or before you've checked into your hotel or after you've checked out, most hotels will hold your suitcases for you for free, but depending on your hotel location, sometimes that might involve extra travel or doubling back on yourself later and wasting time crisscrossing the city. So sometimes a locker is more convenient. Or recently I used them when I sent my suitcases by Takubin, the luggage sending service. Your suitcase arrives the next day, or in my case, as it was long distance, in two days. So we needed a small case of overnight stuff with us, plus all the charges and everything I need for filming. And we didn't want to drag that around with us all day while we were sightseeing, so a locker was ideal. You can find coin lockers in so many locations, mostly in train stations, but also shopping malls and department stores, and some tourist attractions, like these ones at Universal Studios, Shibuya Sky, and Team Lab Borderless. Sometimes these are free if it's an attraction that doesn't let you take backpacks in. Smaller stations might have just a few lockers, like these at Harajuku Station. Larger stations can be huge and will have banks of them dotted all around. For example, Kyoto Station has this entire room of lockers on a lower level and rows and rows of them outside, coded by different flowers. As you walk from the platform to the exit, you'll come across them easily and often there are signs to coin lockers. On to sizes and prices. Lockers come in three sizes, small, medium and large, and then there's the ultra rare XL size. Here's small, which is 400 yen. Here's the medium, it's 500 yen. And here's large, which is 700 yen. Here, just outside Kyoto Station, are some of the extra large lockers. These are pretty rare, there's not many of them. These ones are all in use at the moment, but they are pretty big. The prices are displayed really clearly on the fronts of the lockers, and they're usually pretty similar wherever you go. I did look up the measurements for each size, but I don't think they're always exactly the same. According to the measurements, I didn't think size L lockers would be large enough for our yellow suitcases. These are basically the largest suitcases you can take on a plane. They're just within the 160 centimeters limit on the Shinkansen. But in real life, they fit in size L lockers easily, so don't worry about the measurements too much. The rough guide is small is good for shopping and backpacks, medium is for small hand luggage size suitcases, although I did find some small lockers that were quite long and fit a mini suitcase lying down. I fit in my backpack in two, so that's it, that's 500 yen for the small locker which is a lot longer than it looks. And large lockers are for full size suitcases. The good news is you can open all the doors and try out all the different sizes to find the right one before you commit and pay. Which brings us on to how to use lockers. There are two types of lockers. So these coin lockers with the screen are ones you can pay with your IC card or cash. And these ones with the keys in the doors, you need coins to pay. They only take 100 yen coins. So for the large lockers, which are 700 yen, you need seven 100 yen coins. An IC card is your Suica or Pasmo or other regional card you use to pay for trains in Japan. First, find the locker you want and put in your stuff. For older style lockers with keys, put in the coins, then make sure it's locked and take the key. That's it. Um, and the numbers on the key. Numbers on the key. Newer style lockers have a touch screen. There's a button at the top to change the language to English. Please select the action you wish to perform. Put it in an empty locker, pull down the locking lever, then pay. So put your stuff in. Yep. Pull down the lever to lock it. Please select the locker in which you oh. have placed your baggage. Okay. Please select. Follow the instructions on the screen to pay. 
Please tap your IC card to make your payment. 500 yen. Your usage receipt is now being issued. It prints out a receipt which usually has the locker number on it. If you paid with cash, it'll have a QR code, which is your key to open the locker again. If you paid with IC card, your card is your key. The locker has been locked. With both types of lockers, you can only lock the door once. So make sure everything's in before you lock it. Otherwise, you'll have to pay again. When you're ready to collect your things later, if it's a locker with a key, just unlock it with the key and you're done. For newer type lockers, change the language on the screen to English. Tap the button to retrieve your luggage. Then either scan the QR code on the receipt or tap your IC card and the locker will open. Easy. The locker is now unlocked. Thank you. You don't actually need the ticket, but probably a good idea to keep hold of it. I will keep hold of it. <laughs> of course, once your things are locked away in a locker, you will need to find it again later. And some stations are huge. I have some very boring photos on my phone to remind me of locker locations. If you have air tags, you could leave one of them with your things or pin the location on your phone. I've actually not had trouble finding lockers again. Just take note of what's nearby and which signs are around. And if it's an IC card locker, the receipt usually has the locker number on it. I'm sure if you couldn't find it, you could show it to the staff and they'd help you. You might worry about being able to find an empty locker. Occasionally, information about this is available, but not always. You can use this QR code to check which lockers are available throughout the station. We saw a touch screen earlier as well that did the same thing. There are a couple of websites that list locker locations, Coin Locker Navi, which is all in Japanese, and Locker Concierge. However, in real life, practically, I think it's easier to just keep walking around the station and you'll probably find one. For example, here at Kita Kyushu Station, we walked past several banks that were all full and then we found these lockers near the exits on the way to a department store. If you want to leave your stuff overnight, the price is per day, usually midnight to midnight or 2am to 2am. So if you leave your stuff overnight, you have to pay for two days. The maximum time is usually three days, but check for signs if you're leaving luggage for a long time to see when they're emptied, because the rules aren't always exactly the same everywhere. No corpses, guns or swords, or items emitting a strong smell. <laughs> An alternative is luggage storage offices. You'll find them at the airport and some major train stations. Here's the baggage room at Kyoto Station. It's open 8 till 8. I'm not sure if all stations have this, but I'm sure you could check online somewhere. You can also book storage on radicalstorage.com, which includes hotels, shops, and all sorts of other locations that offer paid luggage storage. I hope that helps with all your coin locker and luggage storage needs. Have a look at my channel for lots more videos for planning your Japan trip and I'll see you again next Thursday.